Let's start off with Joel Embiid. And I hope he had a great weekend. Joel Embiid had 101 points this weekend, so he had a great one. And maybe, maybe we were, maybe we we're just wrong about Joel. We actually, as a KU fan, I was just scared that maybe, maybe they had ruined Joel. But now it just seems like that the problem this whole entire time was Chantar. No, no, Joel Embiid was just recovering from injury. Mm-hmm. And James Harden. Yeah, well, no. Well, yeah. Doctor Well, a little bit of every, a little bit of injury, a little bit of doc, but to me, mainly playing with James well, Harden. Well, so before this game, there was a report that Joel Embiid only retur- recently returned to the Philadelphia 76ers lineup after an illness, and he was dealing with multiple injuries. He had tweaked his ankle, and a Sixers went over the Atlanta Hawks. And then he said he'd be okay to play in teams back to back against Utah. And he also was dealing with a pretty, you know, painful shoulder injury. And he was still working through conditioning issues after being unable to work out for most of the off off season due to plantar fasciitis. Fasciitis. So he was just rounding up into shape. And then he just says, "F that report." He comes in and puts up a historical stat line. On Sunday, and a win over the Utah Jazz. And B became the first player ever with at least 50 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists, 5 blocks in the same game. This is since blocks became an official stat in 1973. And B finished with 59 points, 11 rebounds, and 8 assists, and 7 blocks. In the fourth quarter alone, he scored 26 Philadelphia's 27 points and also recorded 5 of his 7 blocks in the final frame. For the game, he shot 19 of 28 from the field, 20 of 24 from the free throw line. Over the past two games, he has scored scored 101 points after dropping 42 on Saturday against the Atlanta Hawks. For the season, Embiid's averaging a career-best 32.3 points per game. Your thoughts? Well, he's been doing this all season. He just – it wasn't the same, like – like, he had – Almost didn't he? I think he had 40. Yeah, he had 40 against Sacramento not too long ago, like last month before Harden went injured, got injured. He was he was putting up here's his stat lines before he got injured. 20 or before Harden went down. 26 points, 15 points, 40 points, 26, 31, 25. I believe he was averaging like 25. We talked about oh my god, our first ever donation. Thank you, Matt. Um Uh, <laughs> thank you, Matt. <laughs> You're muted. I I'm, I feel like I already messed up the clip. So no, that's so amazing. Gonna, no, really no, no, no. This is a great, <laughs> great mid clip someone donated. Shout out, Matt. Shout out, Matt. First I, ever, eh? Hey, first ever across all channels for me. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I've never gotten. I, I guess have, you don't go live much. Yeah, and I don't do, do donations on my channel because I, I I don't like being a money grubbing whore. Well. Let's continue the clip. Not the. Uh, anyways, thank you, Matt. Oh yeah, he was doing this before he got injured. It just wasn't, you know, fifty burger. Just, and it was just like a different Joel. Like he just didn't have that same tenacity. He didn't have that same like aggressiveness. I felt, but he was still putting up some buckets. So, you know, now that Harden's out, it's just kind of, it's the Joel show. You love James Harden. Why are you? Yeah. You are the de- definition of a devil's advocate. You you love acting like you love a guy, and then in a situation, James Harden's a prime example. You uh, you love James Harden, mm. but then now now you're acting as if you don't like James Harden, and this whole time you've been preaching James yeah. Harden's been the problem. I love James Harden. I'm not saying James Harden's a problem. What you I'm just kind of problem, insinuated. No, yeah. What I'm saying the problem is is Joel Embiid and James Harden be on the same basketball team. I don't believe that works, but. James Harden has done, I feel like he's heading in the right direction as far as learning how to coexist with a big man, but never, ever, ever in James Harden's NBA career has he ever coexisted with a center outside of lob threat. So James Dwight, Howard. The ball Dwight Howard was the best center to ever play with Joel. I mean, and he's still, a rim runner. he's still a rim runner. So the, to me, if I'm James, wasn't if a rim I'm, runner, right? but this is a different James Harden, right? This isn't like freaky athletic James Harden. This is 22 point per game Harden. So, you know, I still have hope that they'll maybe figure something out, but like, these are two guys who like desperately need the ball in their hands. And when James is getting, when James has the ball, which the st- statistics back it off, like if he has a ball for over 50% of offensive possessions 
it, it's going to be hard for Joel to get going. It, it's hard for any of your teammates to get going. You know my thoughts on heliocentric basketball. So I, I, I'm, I don't think that Joel Embiid, I don't care how good he plays, if James Harden and Joel Embiid are on the same basketball team and they're out there at, on the same court at the same time, they're not going to win a championship because it's, it's just not going to happen. So I'm very glad Joel is doing what he's doing when he's healthy and I'm excited for Harden to come back especially for my fantasy team so you know maybe they'll figure it out but I, I say definitely not I think it's all going to be fine I think this team would be a lot better mm -hmm. if they fired our man Doc Rivers I'm mm -hmm. a, I'm, a, I'm a Doc I'm not Bill, what is it Bill Simmons Bill Simmons I'm not like the hater on there but Joel oh, yeah. <laughs> But no, I, I'm serious in the fact that this is a team that should be and could be a lot better if maybe they had a a guy who could, you know, install be a guy who just game to gay game to game. And I don't know. I've just I just think in today's NBA, it's just not the Doc Rivers isn't utilizing the three all stars he has on this right. And even Tobias Harris. Tobias Harris, can we all? But Joel Embiid's been fantastic, and the team's been overshadowed because they haven't been playing well. I just want to talk about my man Tobias Harris. That like nobody's talking about this right here. Tobias Harris is yes, averaging 15 points, which is like his lowest is like the lowest since 2015 he scored. But also, it's pretty crazy thing about Tobias Harris is in year 11. Yeah, he's an old man. But, Somehow he's an old man. But he's shooting 46% from the field, 39, almost 40% from three, ground six boards, three assists. You want to take a guess how many assists, I mean, steals he has per game? Uh, My guess is going to be 1.6. You're a fucking asshole, and I know you're looking at it, but yes. Okay, yeah. He's had a game with five steals, four steals. Like he's been, his defensive rating for this season is, I believe, like, he's a plus defender. Yeah, he's a, he's a plus defender this season. Well, yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a good player, man. He's like a player. I, I still think they're pretty desperate. Um, you know, Trez is averaging like 11 a night, minutes a night, and uh, they only have four players in double digits. So, um, it's a crazy you know. thing about Tobias Harris to play for the Bucks, the Magic, oh. the Pistons, the Clippers, and the Sixers. Yeah. And also, how is Matisse Thibel this bad at offense? Like he's that bad. We're like, like, he used to be a tradable asset. Now I view him as like severely negative. Like he's like double negative assets. How are you this bad? He's pretty inept. And like maybe that's the problem. There is a lot of guys who are just one dimensional. Like they can't do stuff. Like, um. So the first Derek game, Gordon. can I say this? The first game that against the Hawks, I actually liked that performance. Yes, he couldn't sh hit a shot, but he shot. Like. Like on offense, like obviously in the second game, he had like six rebounds, two assists, like five steals and a block. And that was awesome. And he made more of an impact, not offense, but on offense, I felt like the fur in the first start against the Hawks, even though he had three points, at least he shot the ball five times. Four, four of those shots were three pointers. I mean, yeah, if you go one of five and one of four from downtown, you can take as many shots as you want. If you're on the season shooting less than 30% from the field and less than 20% from downtown, like I have a strong intuition that he is completely wide open. Well, he's only <laughs> shot more than one, three, basically. Because he's shooting less than 30%. He can't in three shoot games, he shot more life. than one, three. He can't, can't shoot for his you life. You can't get He's your the percentage worst. up if you're not taking the three-point shots. He, Matisse Thibel is the worst offensive basketball player I've seen since Andre Robertson. I mean, I don't know who's worse right now, Ben Simmons or Matisse Thibel, but yeah, right. Matisse Thibel. 